All right. All good right. morning. Good morning. All right. All right. God is good. God Amen. is good. Amen. You had a good week? You had a good week? Y'all don't sound like it. Sound like it. The Lord woke you up this morning and started you on your way. On your way. He washed over, he you, washed all over week, you all week long, from last Sunday, from last to, this Sunday to this Sunday. There may have been ups and downs, ups and downs, and we are here to worship, to worship and, praise God. and praise God. And so what I want, so you, to what I want you to do is, I want you to do is, I want you to give God a hand clap of praise for what he's done for you this week. Amen. Amen. Now, now we got the preliminaries out of the way. I want you to wave to somebody. It is so good it is to have Doug back in worship. Amen. worship. Amen. God is good. God is so good. It's so good to have Doug back in worship. Wave to somebody. Wave to somebody. If you know somebody, if you feel comfortable, you can hug somebody. Somebody. We want to continue to worship. We want to thank. We want to thank our our guest our guest organist today. Who would like to thank Brother Aaron Graves? Amen. 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 Thank him so much for being here. Let us continue Let us to worship. Let us continue to worship. Please rise. Please rise. The call to worship. The call to worship. Beloved disciples, Beloved disciples welcome. We gather as people gather reconciled, as people to, reconciled one to one another and God, another and God grace, through grace. A gift, a gift freely and lovingly, and lovingly given, given that we do not we earn, do not earn or, deserve. or deserve. We receive the we marvelous, receive the work, marvelous of grace work of in our grace lives, in our lives and, we wonder, and we wonder, is it, is fair. it fair? No, no. God's grace, God's grace, grace is, not is not fair. But a gift of God's, God's mercy. God's mercy. We, gather as we gather as neighbors who have experienced difficulties of every kind. We feel uncertain, we feel uncertain, fearful, fearful, and overwhelmed, and overwhelmed, and we wonder, and we wonder, is it is fair. it fair? No, no, our difficulties, our difficulties are, not are, not are not fair. God's grace, God's needs, grace God. needs God. Uncertain, uncertain, uncertain. Mercy, and mercy and love. Mercy and love. We gather as we a gather as a community that knows the suffering, knows the suffering of, our of our neighbors. We look at the effects, look at the of, effects poverty, of poverty, food insecurity, food insecurity, and trauma, and in trauma in our neighborhoods, and we wonder, and we wonder, is it is fair? Fair. No, no. Suffering, of, suffering our of our neighbors is not fair. Is not fair. And God's grace, God's grace calls us to respond to suffering, suffering, mercy, mercy, and justice. And justice. We gather as we people, gather who, as people question who question how to live, how to live God's, abundance, God's abundance and flourishing, and flourishing world, in built, world built of scarcity, of scarcity and, greed, and we greed, wonder, and we wonder, is it is fair? It fair? Yes, yes. God's life, God's life abundance, and abundance, flourishing, and flourishing is fair, is fair because it is because it is merciful. God's grace, God's grace, form us, form us, form us people, people, of mercy, people of mercy, justice, justice, compassion, compassion, and truth, and telling, truth, and telling. We gather, we gather together. together. Amen. 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 Please remain standing. Please remain standing for our standing first hymn. Him, thumb thou, thumb thou, found every blessing, every number blessing number number four hundred in the red hymnal.
Please be seated. Please be seated. And join me in join me in this prayer morning's morning's prayer petition. petition. Precious Lord, Precious Lord, strip away strip the mask, away the mask I, wear I wear during the week, during the week get, by. get by. Lay my soul, Lay my soul bare before, before, you, before today. you today. Let me see, Let me genuine, see love. genuine love. Show me the Show loves, me the loves that, hates that hates evil and holds on, hold to, what on to what is good. Strip away strip the mask, away the mask that holds my emotion, my emotion in check when I should when share, I should your, share love your love with someone. With someone. Let me see Let the me joy see of joy giving to others. Show me the show power, me the power blessing, blessing those per- those who persecute me. Strip away the mask, away the mask grin, grin, lies, lies. Let's the world, let's the think, world otherwise. think otherwise. About a child, About a child of, love. of love. Amen. Amen. Morning's first morning reading is first reading from, is Psalms, from Psalms 133. 133. About the blessed, about the blessed, the blessedness, the blessedness of, unity, of unity, song of ascent. Song of ascent. How, very good How very good and pleasant, and pleasant it is when kindred live, kindred together, live together in unity. It is like the precious, like the precious oil, on the oil, head, oil running, head, down, running down the beard, on the beard, on the beard of, Aaron, of Aaron. Running down over, running down the, over the collar of robes, his robes. It is like the dew, like of, the dew of Hermon. Life forevermore. All righty. Here are my. Here, come on. Come on, Brian. Come on. Look at him. Come on. Come on, Colton. Come on. There we go. See that? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, Jay, can you run to the pavilion and see if the butterflies are ready? (laughs) You notice I said, run to the pavilion. (laughs) If I were to ask Raina, Raina would have walked to the pavilion. Good morning. How y'all doing? What I have here? Lolly, are, are they regular lollipops or there's something special about them? What's special about them? Okay, they're bigger. What else? Anybody know anything else? Nobody knows? Okay. That's, yes, they have a secret. Shh. Don't steal my show. I got this. All right. On the outside, they look like a regular lollipop, don't they? Right? If I were to open up one of these lollipops, you would just think it's a regular lollipop. But when you dig deeper in the lollipop, there's something in the middle of the lollipop. Does anybody know what's in the middle of the lollipop? No, it's not gum. I was going to get blow pops, but I just said, your parents might tell me if I give you gum. 
I had the blow pops in my hand. I said, no, no, no. What's in the middle? Tootsie Roll. There's Tootsie Rolls. There's Tootsie Rolls in the middle. But you couldn't tell, right? You can't tell. You can't tell. I'm, I'm going to get my favorite one out. I'm, I'm, and today's lesson is, 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 is very simple. Today's lesson is very simple. You still can't tell, can you? You can kind of, because you can look through it, right? But as long as it's covered, you don't know what's in the middle, right? So today's lesson is this. You know, sometimes God puts special things within us that only he can see in us until he uncovers and reveals it to everybody. And even though sometimes on the outside it is real hard, on the inside, God has a special surprise. And that special surprise that God has inside for us is called the Holy Spirit. And even though you can't see the Holy Spirit, it's there. So what I want you to remember is that you're special. And that God has always placed a special spirit inside of you that he's going to uncover and reveal. And you can do anything you want to as long as God is with you. Do you believe that? Okay. So, now that I've said that, I guess I should take my, um, my Tootsie Rolls and go. Or should I share? Should I share? You think so? Cole's like, yeah, I'll share. Okay. So, I'm going to tell you what. Um, you can come and you can get a Tootsie Roll. Come on. Y'all would take the chocolate one, wouldn't y'all? Now, now, wait. No, you can take it. You can have the chocolate. You sure? Do you want to take one for your dad? You want to take one for your mom? You want, oh, you want to take, Brian, come and take one for your mom. Wait a minute. We ain't ready. We ain't ready to go yet. Wait, wait, wait. Come back. Come back. Here's the surprise. Come on, Jay. We started out with, we started out with, Caterpillars. Then we started out with chrysalis. And now we have butterflies. butterflies. And after church today, we're going to go outside and we're going to let the butterflies go. Okay? Yes. If they will let you, you can do it. I'm missing a couple. But we, oh no, they're at the bottom. See, they're at the bottom. Get it to at the bottom. So, and these are pretty butterflies. You see how every butterfly looks like it's a little bit different? Isn't that wonderful? That's what God does to us. He makes it a little bit different, but he loves everybody the same. Isn't that wonderful? They're mine, They're mine Thank you so much. <laughs> now, now, you sure you, you want, for, want for your brother? Oh, he's cool. You want one for your brother? I don't, I, I don't want him to feel left out. Now, now, here you go. Take one for your brother. All right. Now, you got to do me a favor. You got to give your lollipops to your parents because I don't want you to eat them and then get me in trouble. <laughs> you got me? Let's pray. Father God, bless our children. Bless us, Lord God. They have, you have put with inside of them the Holy Spirit that's going blo- to blossom and bloom in their lives. Father, be with them. Be with their parents. Let them train these children up in the way that they should go. So when they get old, they won't depart from it. Bless our time now. Lord God, let us see the tootsie roll inside of all of us, that center that helps to break the outside tough exterior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, now, who's going to take this back for me? Are you? Oh, here you go. You don't say much, but man, when you get ready, look at No, don't fight over the, don't fight. Y'all can go ahead. Make sure to get um, Brian, Colton, it pops to your dad. Don't look at me like that, Brian. Brian, look at me. Like, why? <laughs> you glad I didn't get blow pops? Okay. All right. Our gospel reading today comes from the book of Romans. 
chapter 11, verses 1 and 2, and then 29 to 32. As soon as we get it up on them. Could you stand? I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know that the scripture says of Elijah how he pleads to God against Israel? For the gifts of the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. Amen. This week was a struggle. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to read this to you, and, and I'm going to tell you why it was a struggle. In the book of 1 Kings, uh, chapter 19, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read the first uh, nine verses. And, wait a minute, let me cut on my other light. Okay, when Ahab, Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword, and then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, so may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life like one of those of them by which this time tomorrow. And then he was afraid. And he got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, and which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey to, into the wilderness and came and down and sat under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no longer better than my ancestors. And then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, the angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there was at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and he drank, and he lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came to him a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey may be too much for you. He got up, he ate and drank. And then he went and he was strengthened for the, food had, for, the, for the food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb in the Mount of God. And at that place, he spent the night in the cave. And then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? Rough week. Rough week. When I say rough week, I don't mean rough week as in everything happened that was catastrophic or anything like that. It was a rough week because the Lord started dealing with me with some stuff with Messiah. Rough week. God had started me little snapshots, these little vignettes of what's going to happen and how we're going to do it and what's going on. And and I'm saying, Lord, wait a minute. I've only been here a couple of weeks. God said, what are you afraid of? And I said, Lord, I'm not afraid of anything. You know me. I can go toe-to-toe with the devil any day. And he said, but what are you afraid of? And he said to me, real, 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 real uh, clearly, he said, get ready because the enemy is coming. Everybody say amen. Whenever God gives you a vision and a plan for your life, the enemy is going to try to stop it in any way that he can. In any, listen, there have been days I know ladies that you have gotten yourself dressed only to find you had a run in your stocking. Your, your tire was flat. Your car wouldn't start. Your husband worked your nerves. Your, your husband's out there laying on the horn saying, come on, come on, come on, and you just don't have your makeup on and stuff ain't right. And you get so frustrated, you say to your husband, go ahead without me. That's why we got two cars. 
Then there's those days that you're ready to get up and go, and all of a sudden you get that phone call that you dread. Then there's those days when you don't even want to get out of bed at all because it's just that deep. I I, I know some of you have never had a bad day in your life. I know some of y'all are just waiting to get out there and go on home. I know you're ready. But for those of us in the room who've had bad days, we get like Elijah. We get to the point where we ask God, listen, Elijah asked God, he said, listen, I'm going to go up against Jezebel. And when I go up against Jezebel, we're going to her because she is the final word. And she is the one who right now is being defiant to the most high God. And all of a sudden, Jezebel and, and, and Elijah meets. And watch, when they meet on the mountain, what happens is all of a sudden, the prophet of Baal and, and, and they begin and, um, and, and do the marvelous works they thought they could do. God sends a lightning bolt all the way from heaven and strikes down the prophets of Baal. He kills them, takes them out. And all of a sudden, Elijah said, oh, I signed up, but I didn't sign up for this. He said, Jezebel has armies and soldiers and folk who can kill me, and I'm by myself. Have you ever been in a fight and felt that you was by yourself? Seriously. Have you ever been to a place where you have said, Lord, it's just me and you, and I don't even know if you're enough because I'm weak? Seriously. Have you ever had a mess up moment? Raise your hand if you had a mess up moment. See, I know some of y'all don't want to admit the mess up moment. Mess up moments are clean up moments for God. You know, I, 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 I went to Giant, and Mindy went, went to Giant. There was this little boy, and he took his hand, and he just wiped everything off the thing. And I watched the relish fall to the ground. All of a sudden, you heard over the loudspeaker, clean up on aisle three. And all of a sudden, the lady, she's, she's distraught. And she's trying to figure out how she's going to pay for the mess. Um, the manager comes over to the lady, and the manager is over there, and he's talking to the lady, and she's all apologetic. And she's looking at her son like, I'm going to kill you when you get home. <laughs> then all of a sudden, this uh, guy comes in a, in, a, in a white, you know, you know, the people at the supermarket, they're wearing white shirts. They're they the real bosses. And they're cleaning it up, and she's crying, and she's trying to find, and watch this. And the guy in the white shirt says, it's okay. We'll clean it up, and there's no charge. That's what God does for us. God says, no matter how many things you knock over in life, God says, it's okay. I'm going to clean it up, and there's no charge. And the reason why there is no charge is because Jesus paid it all on Calvary. And the thing that Elijah didn't understand is, watch this, dig this, y'all. The thing that Elijah didn't understand is that Elijah didn't know that he was going to win as long as he had God. Elijah got got so flustered in his own self, watch this, that he said, I've had enough. I've been there. Have you? I've been enough. I've had enough. You know, there's there's been Johnny paycheck moments. Take this job and shove it. Y'all didn't know I knew Johnny Page, did you? Me and Johnny go a long way. There's been moments in my life when I just said, I quit, God. I I don't want to do this no more. And there's been times in my life when I just said, I just want to just go somewhere and chill out. I just want Cam to just take me to the Bahamas on the bike and we can go. And what he does is he gets under the broom tree. He gets under the tree to lay down. He's really giving up. He's really going to lay there and die. And all of a sudden, the angel says, hey, get up and eat. He gets up and eat, but what does he do? He lays back down again. And then he comes back a second time. He says, hey, get up and eat. But what's the message? The message is get up and eat, or the journey might be too much for you. In other words, what the angel was saying to, to Elijah is the same thing God is saying to us. Fortify yourself because there's still work to be done. He was saying, it ain't over yet. 
He was saying, you don't understand. The only reason why, and some of y'all are not going to understand this. Some of my young people are not going to understand this. The only reason why that Jezebel is selling wolf tickets is because she's scared. Jezebel saw the power of God and wanted to put a shock into Elijah because if Elijah ever understood the connection him and God had, Jezebel was done for. I'm going to tell you a secret. The reason why people don't like you is because, watch this, they want to be you. Tell you another secret. There's nothing in the world that you have right now. Nothing, 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 nothing in the world that you have right now that is not a gift from God. Who believes that this morning? When you go to your vehicle, thank God. Matter of fact, when you get up to walk out of here, thank God that my legs work. Thank God that I woke up this morning. Thank God that I could breathe. It's a gift from God. It's God saying there's still work to be done. There's still stuff to do in the journey. But the problem is if you lay down, watch this, if you lay down and you just want to die, God will still rouse you up and say, guess what? Get up. I still got work for you to do. So what is hard? God told me, he said, this is what you're going to do. I said, Lord, you got to be crazy. God said, no, Johnson, I'm not crazy. He said, watch this. He says, you got to understand. You don't, well, he said, you don't, you don't understand what are you doing here. I said, well, this is a trip. I said, God's trying to tell me what I'm going to do at, at my church. And he said, uh, it's not your church. It's my church. You lead my people the way I tell you to. But be ready because Jezebel's coming. Who said it's always darkness before the dawn? There was a guy, I forgot. Look it up, somebody will hit me this week. The battle always comes before the blessing. Write that down. The battle always comes before the blessing. Sometimes the devil wants to fight you before you get to walk into your destiny. Sometimes the devil does some stuff to you that will make you want to go into the cave. But remember, for 40 days on the way to the cave, God provided for him. And when he got to the cave and thought he was safe, God came and said, what are you doing here? There's still work to be done. There's still stuff to be, there's stuff to be, uh, bridges to be built. And here's the best part about it. Here's the best part about it. God uses unassuming people to do great things. One of my favorite texts says, forget the former things. He's going to do a new thing. He makes all things new. And that's why God has given us a blank sheet of paper every morning. Every morning you get up, that's a blank sheet of paper. And every day that you get up and everything that you do, you're writing on your sheet of paper. If you cut somebody out that day, you done wrote on your paper. You done told somebody off, you done wrote on your paper. But the first thing you to do every day that you get you should write on your paper and say, thank God, thank you, God, for another day. Whether it's good or bad, thank you, God. Whether my enemies are going to mess with me, thank you, God. Then at night, when you get to lay down, the last thing you should write on your, on your spiritual paper is, thank you, God, for another day. What are you doing here? Here we go. I'm done. What are you doing here? One, I'm here to work for God. I'm here to live for God. That's what I'm doing here. I'm here to make a difference. I'm here, I'm here so that I can fortify myself for the next day's journey. Listen, look to the person to your right, look to your person to your left, and just look at them and just say, you're a blessing. And, and the reason why you tell them that, that they're a blessing is because I got news for you. They, they will never think they're a blessing until somebody tells them they are. Listen, Dan, 
took his kids on a trip on a train. I was going to tell Kristen, look, make room. I want to go. But that's a blessing. That's a blessing. It's a blessing. That when I saw all my young people in church on, on last Sunday, I said, wow, this is a blessing. Beat their butts in bowling on, on the ninth. I'm going to beat y'all. Y'all, y'all done challenged me. Lord, we got it going on. By the way, if you haven't signed up, signed up. Miss Lori in the back, signed up for, your, for, the bowling, for, for, the, for the bowling outing. And I got news for you. That's a blessing. Because somebody said, well, we don't have that many youth. But then I turned around Sunday and I saw all these young people. I said, whose are they? And I, well, this is someone. So this is I said, well, that's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's, it's a blessing that when you got children that can come for the children's sermon. Well, we only have a little bit. Some don't have none. What are you doing here? We're here to grow our children and youth. That's what you told me. What are you doing here? We're here to nurture our seniors. We're here to let them know that in their golden years, they're loved by their congregation. We're here to love one another. What are you doing here? We're here to be the church on the hill that will not be hid. What are you doing here? We're here to make our kids laugh and to train them up and to set them loose from their crystal stage and let them be butterflies. We're here to... to, to our, our college students, we're here to go ahead and say to Nick, go to Albright. We're here to, 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 to say to Nicole, you go, girl. We're here to say to Tyler, do your stuff at Drexel. We're here to tell all of our college students, we're behind you. Why? Not because, watch this, not because we want you to come back, but because you're a blessing. You're a blessing. Twelfth man was a blessing. Even though I wasn't one of the twelve. I was the 13th disciple. <laughs> You're a blessing. And go, watch this. Do not fret about tomorrow. Live for the day. Live for the day. So what? You're going to put on a little bit of pounds. I ain't get this big by, by drinking water. But go back there and get a cookie. Don't tell nobody. I won't if you won't. I might grab two. But fellowship with one another because that's what we're called to be. We're, 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 listen, I tell everybody, where, where do you go to church? I said, I go to Messiah. Messiah what? Messiah United Methodist Church, Lafayette Hill. The best church United Methodist Church has to offer. People are looking at me like, huh? Before I, before I leave you, I, I was sneaky this week. This, this week, I, I brought in some of my friends who do this church planting stuff. I wanted, to give them, I wanted them to give me an observation of what we're doing here at Messiah. Well, one of my friends came in, and he had been at Tenley. And, and, and Betsy, you're going you're gonna to love this. I said, well, my choir is small. I only got about four people. He said, Okay. I said, and we don't have a full-time, really, musician yet. He said, that's fine. I said, so what does that mean? He says, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, make a joyful noise. He said, well, as long as y'all make a noise and it's joyful, the Lord likes it. I said, okay. I said, and you know, the congregation is kind of small. He said, that's okay. I said, why is that okay? He said, because mustard seeds start out small, but when they get to growing, you can't stop them. I said, so, so what should I do? He said, well, he said, what I want you to do is simply this. He said, he said, I want you to proclaim, pray, and praise. Write that down. Proclaim the word of God. Praise him for what he's done. And pray. If you can talk about the goodness of God in your life, all that he's done for you, and you can tell somebody, well, listen, I haven't done everything right, but God has been good. That's proclaiming God in your life. And when you think back over your life, Daylene, and you think about all that God has done for you, and you get happy, and tears start rolling down, guess what? That's God for what he's done. And in the tough times, if you could just get yourself to a quiet place and just start praying, God will come and answer your prayers. And then when folk ask you what you're doing here, you can say, I've come to praise, I've come to proclaim, and I've come to pray. 
And then next thing you know, you'd be like a person from South Philly. People from South Philly just got to walk. My, my son has one. <laughs> There's nothing like a Christian stroll. A Christian stroll is when a Christian walks in a room with confidence. You know, like that Clint Eastwood movie. Do -do 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 -do. He walks in a room and tells the devil, you're feeling lucky? Make my day. What you doing here? Well, Messiah, we're here to praise, proclaim, and pray. Amen. Time for the offer. Those of you who are watching us by online, if you could, uh, we have an online giving. Uh, we ask you to scan the QR code if you're on, 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 at our website or go to our website right now and give to Messiah. Amen? Amen. We had a one, they had a wonderful day uh, yesterday at 12th Man, amen? And they had an MVP, most valuable parishioner, Barbara Stone. So we don't, we, we don't have an MVP trophy, amen? But what we do have is we have our deepest and wonderful gratitude for everybody who showed up to do what we need them to do. Can, can we pray together? Because you bow your heads. God of grace and God of glory, the God who woke us up this morning and started us on our way. 
Lord, last night someone didn't wake up. This morning the alarm clock rang and they were not alive to hear it. There's family members right now struggling taking care of other family members. God, I say a special prayer today for Deborah Overton in the fact that her husband is climbing the last mile of the way. Be with Deborah as she cares for her husband and her mother. Let her get the respite that she needs. And God, we pray for all of those who are suffering. We pray, Lord God, for former President Jimmy Carter, who is walking down that pathway to glory that you be with him and you be with his wife, you be with his daughter Amy, and a country, Lord God, who, Lord God, has watched this noble gentleman, this noble president, walk down with grace and mercy. And for those today who, Lord God, suffered loss this weekend for senseless violence in Philadelphia, Detroit, Chicago, or everywhere they found themselves, we ask that, Lord God, you give them grace and peace for a journey. Mothers and fathers who are bearing children far too soon. And God, for those who are sick and shut in this morning, Lord God, we pray for your grace and your mercy. But more than that, God, what we pray for is a relief from pain and healing in mind and body and spirit. And God, for that young person or older person who is huddled somewhere in a room who is behind a dumpster, and Lord God, who is ready to inject themselves with drugs, who is ready to take themselves to, the, to a place, Lord God, they think it's euphoria. Father, we ask that they find strength in you to put the needle down, to leave the crack pipe alone. And for that family living out in the car, and for that family, Lord God, who is getting evicted, for that grandmother living out her shopping cart, for that mother who's lost her children to the system, to that father who's behind bars. Lest, Lord God, we forget that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, it could be us. So let's not look and throw a dollar, but let's do the work that's intentional to help ease, Lord God, the pain of a hurting nation. Bring us together red states and blue states, bring us together. Conservative and liberal, bring us together. For in the grand scheme of things, we are all one under Jesus Christ. Bless us now in Jesus' mighty and matchless and wonderful name we pray. As we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for being everything to me and to my family and to this congregation. You are faithful. You are concerned with everything that concerns me. And I'm grateful for your Holy Spirit that confirms us during times of fear and doubt. Thank you for everything that you've done for us, seen and unseen. And we will praise your name forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we all sit, stand, and sing our hymn, uh, There Are Some Things I May Not Know. Thank you so much to Cam. Give Cam a, a hand of appreciation. Thank him so much for being our, our lecturer today.
What are you doing here? Really, what are you doing here? What you're doing is you're ready to praise, proclaim, and pray this week. When people ask you who you are, you tell them that you are a member of the church on the hill that will not be hid. And get a walk, get a swagger about you. Let folk know that you are a bad mother, shut your mouth. Let folk know that you serve an awesome and mighty God this week, that there's nothing you can't do. Put on your superhero cape and walk and kick some spiritual butt this week. Because Isabel's coming. She's coming because she knows that if we get it together, not only will this place be full, but God will be full in us. Have a great week. God, the Son of God, the Blessed Holy Spirit. Rest. We'll abide with you henceforth and forevermore. And don't forget to sign up for Bible study, which is starting soon. Amen? Amen. Amen. Meet you in the back for hospitality.